again, who was yeah. uh, they a major loss to at 3-1. I don't know. We'll see how Zealous uh, come back from here against Dignitas as we go into game number two and check out what exactly the battleground they'll be wanting to play on. It's going to be Infernal Shrines. Dignitas taking the battleground as Zealous will be having the first pick. Dignitas with a choice, Infernal Shrines. Fantastic map for them. I would say Dragonshire is by far their best with a 9 and 0, and it's usually their go to, but Zealots banned it out. Yeah, rightfully so. <laughs> yeah. And now you have Infernal Shrines where Dignitas is sitting at a 7 and 0. So, not too bad either. Yeah, <laughs> not too bad. 100% win rate. Eh, nah, I guess it's okay. I'll have an Infernal Shrines game, whatever. I guess I'll right. take a win. It's all right. Well, Infernal Shrine's coming up here for our two teams. We'll have to see what exactly is going to get drafted once again here from Ding Toss. Seems like that Genji continues to be an issue for a lot of teams. But on the other side, you can't forget about Junkrat. While Junkrat's falling off a little bit for us in the meta, it feels like less teams are playing him. Snitch is someone that is still willing to pull him out, especially on this battleground. Yeah, my eyes are once again to uh, my F. I want to see what happens with her. Top lane, I'm interested to uh, see if Thrall is being drafted again. Mm. Uh, if Blaze, for example, comes in, which is another big option here, especially for Shrine fights in particular. But yeah, Zealous is interesting right now because my personal favorites for the players at this point are definitely Team Liquid on the, for the number three spot and then the Zealots. There's always the chance that either Trick or Method completely step it up and all of a sudden, you know, go through a weekend, weekend where they have like a lot of momentum going and things just click. That's always a possibility, but just from what we've seen throughout 2018 so far, I would say that Liquid has the best chances of making it, and then Zealots will probably try and heavily contest them. Because, as we said, for the Zealots, this is a really different beast right now, going up against Dignitas here. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's an interesting situation, for sure. The players are going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of fun. But now that we're heading into this, we can see if Zealots are maybe able to claw their way back into that series. They're banning out Mayev again, so definitely doing their homework, watching the last weekend of Dignitas and realizing that Mayev was a key part of the compositions that Dignitas was trying to draft. There's also the Abather Factor, something that Zealots will pull off on any battleground. Heck, we've seen them pull it off on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Of all battlegrounds where you typically don't want to go into him, Zealots just willing to change the meta at their own will, so Dignitas need to think about that. There's also the thought of uh, Medivh. Will we want to have her taken away, or him taken away? I feel it's also a tank composition at this point or a problem because especially the Dignitas, want, like, they like to play Diablo on the map. Mm -hmm. Now, they played with, they have a lot of variety in tanks uh, with JPL at the front line here. We've seen them recently play Stitches on the map, which is, which is a classic from 2017, sure. 16 even. But they are the ones banning out Diablo. Now again, Diablo is their most played tank on the map, but they're also a bit afraid that Zealots are just going into a snap Diablo pick and then you have to think about Medivh right away. Yeah. So that's always a bit awkward. But with them banning out Diablo, they're leaving Hanzo open for Zealots. And while we have Team Liquid and Dignitas being the two teams that have the best track record with Hanzo, we still see Zealots and Trick Esports pick Hanzo more so than any other team. So especially when uh, Hanzo was still one of the picks where Europe was pretty divided, and a lot of teams didn't really feel, okay, this is the hero to go for. Even back then, Zalets and Trick were the two. So Hansa is a super early pick here for them. Opens up the possibility of a Tacita double support composition again. So Dignitas might ban that out on the second slot. But right now, it's more so important how Dignitas is going to react to it. What about Tracer for Team Dignitas? Hanzo coming out, immediately your mind is thinking, okay, how do I get to that Hanzo? How do I take him out? We could definitely see Tracer play from them again. And it's normally a bad... Actually, it's interesting the lack of Tracer bans in these two drafts that we've seen so far. Because over the last few weekends, Tracer has been the priority ban. And oftentimes against Dignitas. So we could definitely see that set up. But first they're going for Malf uh, for Malfurion Junkrat. So Malf as a support, you still have the option to go into Tracer. But with Junkrat already drafted, you have the wave clear secured for yourself. Yeah. And displacement. And we've been talking about how for Team Liquid, how for Dignitas, displacement is such a huge factor. Now. This is a big adjustment from Dignitas too. Typically we see that Junkrat in a 3 4th pickup. Um, Fnatic has been first picking Junkrat a lot, but Team Dignitas? Seeming to really enjoy him on this battleground. They're going to have him in their 1-2 slot. And as you mentioned, help for the wave clear, but also for a lot of the heroics. I actually kind of feel like Riptire is one of the strongest heroics you can have in the game because of how much utility you can get out of it with the amount of damage you can get in an area effect. It's pretty ridiculous, actually, when you actually think about what Riptire brings to the team. Being able to just buy time, dance around, and then find that perfect moment. Yeah, and with Malfurion, I, I, again, I have to highlight it once more. 
We have a win record with 19 and 3 right now on Malfurion for Zelia. It's pretty good. When it comes to uh, to Malfurion and to Uther, Zelia is just insane. He's 11 and 1 on Uther. He's 19 and 3 on Malfurion. Stukov, eh, not quite his hero from a playstyle perspective. He's been talking about it in the past two ways. That just like, yeah, I don't really feel it. But when it comes to his Malfurion play, it's absolutely crazy. So that trend just continues, and it also, of course, justifies the early pick on Malfurion again, where Zalets decide to potentially give Stukov up. They're not going for a pick here. They go into Garrosh, and we are going to see Zamani and Sonya again. Yeah, they look to have more Shrine control here with the Hanzo Explosive Arrow level 4, Sonya on that front line, and then Garrosh controlling Chokes. Zealots should be able to win Shrines, especially if they're first. So my question is, is Team Dingtoss going to attempt to try and match that with their own pickups yeah. here later on in the draft? Or will they just go ahead and try to side soak, have Junkrat double soak a little bit, get a strong 4-man that can get kills, and go from there? Team Dingtoss bans out Sukov just to make sure Zealots will not be able to grab that later on. The interesting part for me is that for Dignitas, from their perspective, there were so many bands that presented themselves to them. Do you ban Stukov? Do you ban Tassada? Do you mm -hmm. ban Medivh? Yeah. So there's all of a sudden just like this huge variety of heroes where you're like, which one of those do we ban? Do we target ADRD? Do we try to target Chad? Or how do we work around this? I think that's why this 1-2 pick is so clever for them. They can leave up Medivh because they automatically have portal control right away if Medivh does get decided to get grabbed, which is still an option because Garrosh and Medivh is a pretty deadly yeah. combo. But at least now you have traps, you have the ability to knock back your opponent, you have Malfurion roots, and Malfurion showed in game number one how strong he is to handling those portals. So they decided to go ahead and go a different route and say, you know what, let's just make sure that no crazy silences come our way. There's no way that we get poked down and take out Stukov instead. So I really like the draft so far of being able to handle those options. I think Medivh would be a great choice for Zalets regardless because with Hanzo you already have a vision tool so you don't necessarily need Tassadar for that fact. Mm. You are not going up against Garrosh so if you go into any kind of shield setup with a pseudo support it's not because you want to save someone that gets displaced outside of a Junkrat of course. So with Sonya having Medivh on their side would definitely work out for them. But there's that layer defense and we have Dignitas heading into Jaina. Something that we are seeing more so on the North American side. Now we had a couple of Jainas also in Europe, but not nearly as many as we see in other regions. She's here to help. But will they find the combos they want? You have Blaze with Jet Propulsion, but you can't really rely on a Jet Propulsion to land a 3-4 man stun. You have to set it up a little bit. Will we go into that Ring of Frost, or do you think we might have a water elemental adjustment here? I would still heavily bet on Ring of Frost. Yeah? I mean, Water Elemental is the go-to in North America still, mm -hmm. but in Europe I haven't seen a Water Elemental in ages. Then again, we have to also say that so far Jaina has only been played by Fnatic. We've seen four games played Man by Fnatic, and so this is the only team in Europe that has played with Jaina in the league setup. So uh, this is the first time that outside of Fnatic another team looks at Jaina and says, okay, this is our pick here. But this is a lot of burst potential immediately. And we still see that Abatha. We've been talking about it earlier. You mentioned it that at the West End Clash, we had Abatha taken and now mm -hmm. they're playing their same style again. They're trying to use Abatha here uh, on technically or what is supposed to be. No, for a second. I am blanking. I was in tune for a second. No, we're on Frost Shrine. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know that. I was just like, wait a second. I'm gonna, but Tomb uh, comes yeah. from because they played it in the Western Clash on Tomb. Yes, but I was just about to say, on what is supposed to be his worst map? And I'm like, wait a second, we're on Frost Shrine. It's not that bad. Well, final pick up coming in from Team Adignitas. Are you looking for a little bit more of a front line here? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, at this point, actually, Blaze is highlighted by uh, JPL. Now, they still have the swaps, of course, after the draft. But JPL as a drafter could definitely be the one here. So you can stay place into the main tank position. I would still assume that they're picking a main tank, and they do. So Stitches is being taken, and that makes a lot of sense with Jaina because now all of a sudden you're looking at a hook into Roots, into Jet Propulsion, and into the blow-up potential through uh, through Jaina. Yeah. You have a lot of wave clear as well through Junkrat from the outside of the Shrine. So there's definitely a lot of tools that they have right now to make this work. Don't get me wrong, Zealots has a fair amount as well, and especially mm. when you look at Abatha now, together with uh, Sonya or with Garrosh, that's a really powerful tool. You have Uther in the mix as well, who can provide the Divine Shield whenever you're trying to really just spin to win and get that momentum with Sonya on the Shrine. 
But one hook and a nice setup and a good synergy, and Dignitas walks away with an early kill and turns it into a four, five plus four. Yeah, the best part is that hook connects and you find a lockdown. It's really hard to try and come in and fight that when Jane has a ring of frost available, right? You're like, I can't fully save you. You need to be able to back up here. And with the cleanse on the other side, they'll be able to have save buttons here and divine shield. It's just a matter of how quickly can Zelt follow up on the hooks that are coming out. So this will be an interesting game here to see how exactly one Dignitas gets the kills if they have the quick follow up. But if they can't find that kill, how exactly does Zelt? handle that hook coming in and then being able to save a target. Let's go ahead and move into game number two. Infernal Shrines is going to be the name of the game for our teams. Dignitas is currently up one to zero. Game on as we're heading into our second game of the series. And we have to the left side of Infernal Shrines with a 1-0 lead for Dignitas. We're seeing to the left the Zalets with Chris on Hanzo, Shad on Uta, Zamani on Sonia, Garrosh played by Mopsio, and ADRD with a Carapace build on Abathur. On the right side, and the red, Dignitas. We'll be playing Blaze, Poik on Jaina, Zelia on Malfurion, Snitch on Junkrat, and JPL playing Stitches. It's time to hook. Yep, once again on Stitches here. And with this setup, this is actually going to be uh, one of those where the Wombo combos could definitely do a lot of work here. I'm really liking that Stitches as the last pick. Stitches still looking strong in Europe, seven and one. The only loss actually when the Zealots tried to play him two weeks ago. So right now, Dignitas with an opportunity to get another victory with uh, one of the most handsome heroes in the game under their belt and going straight for that slam build for the extra damage. Wait, who's a handsome hero? Stitches. Okay. Like, I really like his complexion and, like, the mm -hmm. symmetry. His skin care is definitely a attribute that I wish I had. Yeah, his skin care is definitely a 6.5 out of 10. There's, like, no doubt about it. No, it's an 8.5 out of 10 now. That's changed, man. You gotta, you gotta update. No, no, no. no Kato, no. you're living in the past. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's the original meme, you know, it's the OG. Mm. All right, then. 6.5 out of 10. Don't try to hipster me here. <laughs> uh, is there a hook here? JPL was thinking about it. Go for Mopsio, but Mopsio, he's playing it smart, man. He's not going to get caught out. Last week, he had some hard times in the Diablo, getting picked out a few times. This week, playing a little bit more passive on that Garrosh. <laughs> Mopsio is showing that minion who's boss. Sometimes when you're Garrosh, dude, you just have all this rage built up inside of you. You haven't used your cooldown in a while, so you just throw a minion. And it makes you feel good, honestly. I don't need Garrosh to feel that way. <laughs> you throw keyboards, Kaldor. You want to know my secret? I'm always angry. I'm always angry. <laughs> <laughs> Kikling like two dummies. Great. All right, boys. So, game on. We have, at this point, actually, once again, Hook? the first camp taken. That's actually a lot of pressure in the mid lane here. So, it opens up a bit of wiggle room for Dignitas to now dominate the bot lane. And for a second, it looked at least as if we were trying to spy out ADRD. Now, of course, what Dignitas is trying to do here is exploit that there's an Abathur factor in the game now. So they are taking early control of the mercenary camps and trying to use that now to keep Zealots on their toes, to force them to rotate, to just simply react to this. Because ADRD might be able to hold that bot lane. The problem is he can't really do anything against Snitch now assisted by a camp. And as long as the rest of the team is threatening the middle and the rotations of Zealots, this is bound to get at least some damage done. Shout a bit early on that Uther gank, trying to jump on top of Junkrat and get out of stun. Obviously trying to make sure that he can get away so Garrosh can get there. But a little bit less coordinated. Garrosh up no, a little bit behind him, about three or four steps, making it too hard for him to get a kill. Junkrat gets away easily, and because of that, Zealots all out. That there's two or three people in the bottom, so Dignitas says, okay, let's go ahead and grab our mercs to the top right. And they'll be able to counter push pretty well on that top lane against Sonya. So we have Oil Dispersal taken by Wubi as a level 4 talent, and it's pretty interesting because you are just having an area increase on the oil spill and you also increase the slow amount by 10%. That's pretty cool if you're trying to dominate the shrine itself, but it's also great if you're attempting to follow it up after a hook is there. So if you play your cards right, you can really just like slow the entire approach or escape of your opponent out. And with three heroes being melee on the side of Zealots, that's definitely a tool where you will see value during those fights on those certain lockdown points, which we are seeing here as we speak. With JPL, of course, he also has the stamina. There's the hook, there's a the root, and immediately Jaina gets some damage in. But Snitch, in this case, maybe a bit too fast on the propulsion on the Castle Mine, but Shad is still taken out as we are seeing the follow up from Snitch and Void. Yeah, we'll be able to come on the top, get the jet propulsion. He'll have a jet propulsion up pretty soon here, too. Another root comes out. Snitch gets thrown, but JPL is attempting to retreat as he gets healed up. Wobby goes in for the jet propulsion, hits two. Poik with the immediate follow up. 
coming in with the blizzard and grenades close enough to getting a kill, but zealous walk away. But effectively, they've been killed because Team Dignal is able to back up and grab the shrine. Also, we have an adjustment on Garrosh now with the Indomitable taken as a level four talent. It's something that Mofsu doesn't really do too often. At this point, he just respects that hook setup and also the lockdown that we're seeing from Dignitas because normally he's all about trying to just simply get the additional heals out through his uh, level four and level 13 talent synergy. But that doesn't really happen here. So Indomitable is the choice. Makes a lot of sense with what Dignitas has. And Dignitas by now, of course, is also going to get a bit of a spike here with the level 7 ability. Especially when you look towards Ditches. If you go for the slam build after you have the Toxic Gas, that's where a lot of your damage is going to come from. It's a bit of random damage, but it's great poke damage when you're in the area. First of all, it helps you with the AoE against the minions to get those stacks. And also, if you just can hammer those slams out against opponents, you're getting the entire team low, slowly, and steadily. And here comes already the attempt again to get another kill here. Punisher is there, could trigger another jump soon. Mobs, you're actually attempting to get out here, and here's a problem because Junker is already covering that repeat path. And he uses the Indomitable too. Mobs, falls. Great play there by JPL in particular, waiting for the Indomitable to come out, fainting like he wanted to go for a hook. Mafzio going for the read, drops Indomitable, and suddenly gets caught out with his pants down. And Team Dingdoss able to find that hook and eventually get the kill. And with Zealots fighting there and crocking the jump on the Punisher, it means they can't bait it over the wall. So this is normally something that you see a lot in Hero League, where one Doofus walks out of the gate and uh, procs the Punisher stun, and then you lose the wall and the fort. In this case, it was a team fight attempt, but the result was more or less the same. The jump gets procked before the Punisher reaches the wall, and then it's on cooldown, and now we have an entire fort loss on the side of the on the side of the zealots. So this is like the dream. Somebody procking it before it arrives there, you always want to bait the Punisher over. Zealots couldn't do it in this case, and that leads to an entire fort eliminated. And we're now all of a sudden seeing how far Dignitas, with only two kills, is already setting themselves ahead here. One and a half levels ahead, they have a level 10, and now they are in full control of the map and can just leapfrog that lead to another Italian by simply using the 10 ability to threaten forts and potentially even dive behind it with a 10. History repeating itself. Zealots, two levels behind their opponent, about to get level 9, but they need that 10, especially because they're an ab of their composition. Mopsia trying to even do anything he can here to clear out this mini wave, tossing over one of the Merc camps, but eventually with a wave coming in, Ding Toss walks forward, and due to them having level 10, Zealots can't defend, and that's a fort. And there you see exactly the problem, because with Stitches here, it's also the issue. Oh, that was a nice, cool move by Mopsia, but Bile is being used. And now we are having Garrosh in trouble, and he's getting slowed, he's getting hooked, and that should be the end of Garrosh. He goes down. Was a good throw, but at the same time, it was one of those things where... It, it, I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty, but you should probably have played this a little bit smarter and just simply, like, wait for it. It's one of the toughest things to learn in Heroes of the Storm that sometimes you let, need to let things go. With Dignitas having 10, they could aggressively push towards the fort, and with Stitches in the composition, Zealots couldn't really defend properly because Stitches always has that hook area, so you need to move away from this. And now Dignitas even going through the top, eliminating the fountain here. And all of this snowballed from a Punisher taken, two kills, and then the uh, Punisher not jumping over the wall because the stun was procced in the previous team fight. I might be feeling a little toxic today because I feel like that was actually a really bad throw. Uh, I, I like the idea if the fort is still standing and you're good to go, right? Like, I understand the idea. Clear out the wave, throw somebody and get a kill. But that fort was so low on health that Jada can get rid of it easily by dropping one of her combos and then it becomes an immediate kill and that's exactly what happened. I think Mopsia wasn't paying attention to what was surrounding him. I feel he just felt pressured and thought that he needed to make a play. Maybe, yeah. That felt like it. I like this invade though, on the other hand. That's nice. actually something that Dignitas didn't see coming that they would move in with this many heroes. So a nice steal, but it could come at a cost because Zarmany is in trouble. He's trying to get away, but we've been talking about the slow earlier. Here comes the Divine Shield to keep him alive, but also Tranquility has been popped, so an exchange of cooldowns is happening here as we're moving in again. And right now, yeah, Zealots walk away. They stole the camp, exchanging cooldowns on the Heroics here. Tranquility had been used, the Ring of Frost as well. Divine Shield was procced. We had the Hanzo Arrow coming out, but in general for Zealots, this was still... Was still worth it, yeah. Yoink! Coming in there and taking away the mercenary camp. And one of the best parts there, too, is Zelt's going to turn around the, fire, the fight uh, because we had Junkrat moving in with a Rip Tire, attempting to knock somebody in. But Hanzo did a really good job of clearing that up, which allowed Zelt to say, okay, if you want to fight, we're now ready to go. Good cleanse, good divine shield, allowing Sony to have that full wrath, but allow them to turn around. Talking about what you said earlier with uh, Mopsio and the play that he made there, which led to his death at the fort, he talked about that in the past, and uh, we actually commentated on that 
as early as 2016 already, where we've been talking about how it oftentimes feels that he is trying to be... To, he's, he's too heavily trying to make the play, and he seem, it seems sometimes forced, and he talked about that, and he said that he felt like he needed to do something way too much, and this is something that he works at, and he developed into a fantastic tank player. But in the situations like this, you can still see that pop up a bit, where he, f he feels that pressure and he's trying to go for a play. This, on the other hand, might just work out as JPL is getting thrown in, but of course the hit point heavy Stitcher survives at least for now. And now Mopsio again attempting to s uh, move out, but the bunker is blocking his path and Zombie is in the same trouble. Oh my. Divine Shield saves Sonya, but Garrosh is down and now Shad himself is in an awkward spot. Well, Sonya got zoned and taken apart. Double kill for Dignitas as they have five kills against Zero. They have the level 13 advantage by now, of course, nearly heading into level 14 at this point. And another Punisher that is going to walk through the middle. And it's going to be an Arcane Punisher at that. Dig playing this so well. Stitch is getting thrown into the side, which is simply something that Stitch does not want to deal with. He doesn't really deal with the pressure well if he's able to be pulled in. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice little cute move there. Helping hand comes in. But Wubby following up, making sure that if there is going to be a toss stitches, he is there to be his best friend. Dropping down a bunker, a line for the team to group up. They'll naturally move in on the target, trying to get a kill. And that's where Jaina came in and brought that ring of frost, which eventually led to that rip tire that secured a kill. Yeah, and at this point also opening the side wall to allow stitches a hook, but JP hit the wall instead. But of course, especially having now the Mega Smash, it's going to be great for them. As soon as they can get that damage in, once more we have Garrosh falling, and this is actually going to be, this could be game here. They are trying to go for Shad. The keep is already suffering. It's a triple kill, and that is probably lights out. Five heroes in, and right now with Abathai in play, there's a very good chance that we are just going to see them end the game here and making this a very, very quick 2-0. Ring of Frost comes out, zones Hanzo a little bit against the damage on the core itself. And with that, we're now having them focus straight on it. Zelia still has Tranquility available. Allows them to get the sustain here. Bunker as a layer defense comes into play. And this is gonna be it. Jagantas clearing out this core and sending a warning to anyone that might be at the MSB that they are ready to go. Shutting down at Zealots with a 2-0 so far and a four-level lead to boot to finish out that game. Dingtosh is completely on point here and delivering the final kills, but also the setups too, man. They are playing great. Wait, who? Dingtosh. Yeah, but Zealots? You just... No, did I say Zealots? Yeah, I was just like, what? What? I don't know, man. My brain doesn't work sometimes. Dingtosh nah. destroying... Now, Everything I just said is about digging to us. Yeah, I, I would say the same. Like They are looking absolutely fantastic here. I absolutely agree with that. They are doing work. And also, again, I mean, just if you look at the damage numbers, look at Poik, 18,000. You compare that to Abathon, 23k, Zarmanu on 14, Chris on 25. Hanzo just gets those numbers in, but it doesn't mean that it's damage that translates into anything yeah. tangible. They didn't get a single kill, but as if you look at the damage output for Dignitas, it might not be as high, but it's on point, it's on target, and it delivers the kill. So eight kills against zero pretty much tells you the tale here. And it's just Dignitas with a very impressive performance, 10 minutes. Great, I mean, it was just like straight up play, no Two chance talents. for the opponent. Jesus. Two talent lead as well, yeah. And it was only eight kills to zero. It honestly was such a beat down that I thought it was more because they were winning the team fight so much. Dignitas just being well controlled here. And Zealots, as we get ready for the playoffs, man, I'm a little bit worried for them. Need to clean up a little bit. Now, to be fair, we were being a little bit harsh on Mopsio there, but Dignitas is doing such a good job of putting so much pressure on that front line that he can't do much. I think the bigger problem was the first Punisher. You yeah. can't just give up a fort on that. Like, uh, going into that fight and being willing to fight on the Shrine, mm -hmm. even though the Punisher has already claimed, was, I feel, a mistake. If you get a kill, then maybe you can just like lessen the impact a bit off the first Punisher. But first of all, they lost another hero in that encounter. And then, I mean, we're hopping on the same thing here, but if you don't proc the Punisher over the wall, you're losing too much infrastructure. And then the level 10 came in, and from that point on, Dignitas knew all we have to do is snowball. We are two levels ahead, we have level 10, we just took the fort at the bot lane, and with a heroic ability, what are they going to do if we just move mid lane and take the second one? They Nothing. can't fight us. We can still hook them, so they have to just walk away. Then Mopsio makes that simple mistake, but I actually don't think... It was annoying, but I don't think it had that much of an impact. It was more so that, that bottom fight that then spiraled completely out of control. Dignitas continues to dig a grave for Zealous, and we'll see if they can get a 3-0 over them as we head to a commercial break. Zealous will have to dig deep here and see if they can get that reverse sweep.